What's up guys, that's Tino Plays here and welcome back to the FIFA 16 Sheffield Net Career Mode series and today is episode 10 of season 3 and another three games. This time the schedule is a bit easier for us because we have the Friday game in our FA Cup fixture and after that there'll be more than a week's break before the third game of the episode. And we still do have a reasonable break between the first and second games so I'm pretty sure our fitness should be able to get back up to what it was and we shouldn't have too many problems performing to the same level we were able to earlier in the season. So, first game here is away at Norwich, who we drew 1-1 with earlier in the season. And we should have won, but a bit of poor defending undid us, so... Yeah, we didn't manage to get the three points against them last time. Now, of course, they came up with us last season as champions when we only got the playoffs, but... Things have changed a little bit and we have surpassed them this season, so hopefully we can show our dominance and beat them this time. But um, it's not going to be easy because they are still a good team in this game, so we'll see how it goes. From here, uh, in this corner, Malumbu gets the chance and he stabs that one in, so they take the lead in the early stages of the game as the home side. and. We fell behind early on from poor defending at a set piece and we really shouldn't have been conceding there but yeah Kieran Agard here finds himself going through and a brilliant challenge to prevent him from cutting in and firing that one into the net but here Wes Burns is stood off no one challenges him and he fires that one into the top left for 1-1 before the half hour mark. No one was stopping him there and he just ran on and on, eventually finishing that one. And that is his second goal of the season. It's a confirmation that at half time it was 1-1 and finally poised. So in the second half we had an opportunity to go on and win the game. So Burns here on the right hand side again. Gets past the defenders, no one is stopping him. He spots the opportunity in the middle and Tolisso finishes it by stabbing it in front, like getting there in front of the goalkeeper and stabbing it in. So a bit of a scruffy goal, but you know, it's good instinct and he's finished it. So we go 2 1 up. And um, here, Ganabri turns in. He gets a penalty because he is blocked and Amber steps up to take it for his first league goal in quite a while now I believe. He takes it and it's 3-1. And um, we had a commanding lead away from home and it looks as though we're gonna get another away win. But here Jerome, uh, after a scramble in the box, finishes that one right at the end to make it 3-2. Although in all honesty, it was no more than just a consolation given the time in the game. So that's what it turned out to be, straight from kickoff the referee blows his final whistle and it ends 3-2. A bit nervy at the end, but we hang on for the win. And that is a great way to start off this episode, having only got two league draws last episode. So back to winning ways in the league. And now we are going to move on to the FA Cup game at home against Bournemouth, who were relegated from the Premier League last season in this career mode. But they are still a good team, so we're going to have to be wary. We're playing a strong lineup with Ambrose again making way for Agard because I want. Well, in, actually, I changed my mind on that front because thinking about it, Ambrose and Dicker has been a better combination, so I think it would be wiser to go with Ambrose in this case. Now, hopefully, I'm right on that one, but I mean, we'll see if our full strength side is good enough to beat Bournemouth which hopefully it will be. And if it is, we will find ourselves in the fifth round and once again FA on Cup. the charge in the FA Cup. So, um, I mean, we kick off in this game as favourites, but obviously in the FA Cup, anything can happen. So early into the game, Aaron's here, not challenged and manages to break through the defence, but his shot is blocked, so it comes to nothing. And then again here, no one challenging him, he takes it past all of them and then eventually here takes his shot and fires it into the top right corner. He ran all the way around the defenders there and found the finish in the end. 
So we take the 1 0 lead and they just stood off Aaron's and they were punished. He uses his pace, takes it past him, and finishes it spectacularly. Back to him again. But here, our defending was leaving us wanting once again. And um, it was 1 1 pretty quickly afterwards. And, and this just kind of reinforces the point that once we have a new season's budget for the start of next season, we need to predominantly be looking at defenders. But for now, we don't have enough to get in the sorts of defenders we really need to improve the team. So that's a bit of a non-starter. Um, but here, they score again. Tomlin getting on the rebound. And it's 2-1. They've turned it right around. And no one helping out the keeper when he parries it out. Although whether he should have parried out at all is questionable. But before half-time, Dicko goes through. He cuts in. It does take a deflection, but he scores. And it's 2-2 before half-time. We get ourselves back in it, and their lead lasted no more than 10 minutes. So, half time, and it was 2 2, finally poised. But, um, yeah, in the second half, not really an awful lot happening. And here, we have to skip all the way to the end to find anything happening. And the only thing that does happen is the final whistle. So, despite a lively first half, an incredibly boring second half. And 2-2 was how it ended, so pretty interesting one there, to be honest. I mean, we've never really had such a boring second half. Maybe the first half's been bad before, but that's a first. The Next game now, and we're playing Palace at home this time, and we've already played him away. So, um, yeah, I mean, a rematch this time against Crystal Palace, who we did beat 3-1 away earlier in the season. So, I mean, you would think that we can repeat it and get the win again but that we will see about because reverse games almost never go the same way as the original game so yeah I mean we'll see how we do we might beat them though because last time our counter-attacking football proved too much for them and we overturned a 1-0 deficit to win 3-1 so yeah, I'm pretty confident that we can beat them again, but yeah, I mean, we've had plenty of respite between the last game and this one, so I um, think fitness can be an excuse for any slip-up in results, so yeah, um, now the first clip of the game involves this superb cross and a superb header, and it's 1-0 already, it's Edgar providing the goal, and it was all just from a harmless free kick. Simple passing move, simple cross, and it ends up in the back of the net. As you can see here, a nice little 1-2, and the cross into the box is headed in to apparently a non-existent net, according to EA, but, you know, EA are just that good. So aside from some EA shenanigans and a goal, it is 1-0 half-time, and we kick off with the advantage going into the second half, but they bring on Connor Wickham, so extra firepower up front I guess you could say but um, yeah Ambrose here could have made it 2-0 at the start of the second half but his shot is well saved so yeah but Dicko here has his shot saved but this time we do get the rebound and it is Tolisso with his second goal in two Premier League games now and his second goal of the episode so um, he's finally starting to get into scoring form the central midfielder and that put us 2-0 up a very comprehensive goal but the referee didn't want it to be anything like comprehensive for us. He thought he would make it a bit harder for us by giving an absolutely nons a nonsensical penalty to them for a handball that just really wasn't one. And they score it to make it 2-1. So at this point I was pretty confident we could hold out as long as they didn't get any other decisions in their favour. And the only way they were going to equalise was another penalty. But then Punchin here crosses it in. And what do they get? Another penalty. The referee seems to have a bit of a liking for Crystal Palace and wants to give them a point. Because he feels sorry for them, seeing as they're not up to the mark and they weren't going to get a result. So he gifts them a goal and they get it at 2-2, which is an absolute load of rubbish because we were much better than them. They were rubbish throughout the entire game. 
and that is just typical EA nonsense, really. That's just how EA do it. Like, they ruin your game by giving terrible decisions, and the referee just wants to screw you over, so... There we go. We learn quite a lot about EA Sports and the way they have produced their game. Um, although these are things we largely already knew. But anyways, at the end of this episode in particular, we are still in fourth. Two points clear of Arsenal. So, we're holding on and going pretty nicely at this point in the season. And we are certainly not going to be threatened by relegation. So, we're going pretty well. If you want to see the next episode, be sure to leave a like and subscribe. And I'll see you guys later. Peace out.